emergency management. Let me turn on the microphone. Opening statement I want to do on the Office of Emergency Management. So there was a lot of confusion yesterday in the public domain. It was absolutely understandable there was so much confusion. I want to set the record straight now, and I want to give people a sense of what happened here. Uh, weeks ago, I approved a change of leadership at the Office of Emergency Management. And I want to be very, very clear. This has nothing to do with the storm. I know uh, in the absence of specific information, some of you reported that. I want to tell you straightforward, that is a falsehood that's inaccurate. I don't blame you for making an assumption. It's just not true. The decision was made well in advance of that. Uh, I felt, and others in the leadership of the administration felt for some time, that we needed to make some changes at that agency, and we needed to get more out of that agency. We needed a more strategic approach. I think OEM has been a very strong organization when it comes to tactical work. We need more focus on strategy. And I want to say at the outset, uh, both uh, Commissioner Esposito and the leadership team at OEM and the people who work at OEM do uh, a really fine job on behalf of the people in New York City. But we felt that more was needed going forward in an ever more complex world. We needed to see an approach uh, that would modernize the agency and prepare it for the challenges ahead. Uh, Deputy Mayor Anglin and Commissioner Esposito had a conversation on Friday. Uh, that conversation, obviously, now we understand, involved a certain amount of miscommunication uh, and misunderstanding. Uh, it was a conversation that did not go the way it was planned. Uh, in the heat of the moment, I think, because of the misunderstanding, uh, a series of things went into motion. Uh, I had been, uh, I had heard back later on Friday that it had been an emotional conversation, a tense conversation that obviously is not unusual when personnel matters are involved, but did not understand until Monday when more information was provided uh, that situation had involved so much misunderstanding. Uh, once that was clear, uh, I met with uh, Deputy Mayor Anglin, then met with Commissioner Esposito. Uh, everyone had a chance to think about it, talk about it more. I had a second meeting with Commissioner Esposito, and we were able to come to uh, a much greater understanding of how to proceed. There will be a leadership change at OEM. It will take place over time. As you heard last night, there will be a national search for a new commissioner. But this is a transition we expect to take months. Uh, commissioner Esposito will continue in his role in the meantime, along with his team. We are talking to uh, Commissioner Esposito about other opportunities in the administration. Uh, so those are the facts. Uh, commissioner Esposito uh, served in that role uh, for four and a half years already. Again, in a, in a big, uh, sophisticated organization, there are times when you say you want new leadership for a variety of reasons. This is one of those times, with real appreciation for all uh, that Joe Esposito has done for the city over the years, and uh, with an open door for him to take on another role going forward. So uh, national search underway. Uh, we'll report as we get to the point of hiring someone new on who that person will be. Uh, but in the meantime, I expect uh, the operations of OEM to continue uh, consistently, as they have, uh, and for that work to go on, and we will continue doing our work overall while we search for a new commissioner. Go ahead, Dave. Mayor, did you have a conversation then recently with Deputy Mayor Anglin about, hey, you could have handled this a heck of a lot better, and is she in any trouble in your administration? Look, I, I want to say a, a perfectly fair question, but I want to say at the outset, when it comes to personnel matters, I'm sure you would agree there's a certain amount of discretion I'm going to exercise. If the shoe were on the other foot and, you know, we were talking about your situation at your station or whatever, you would want discretion too. So I'm going to keep this broad on purpose. Uh, the conversation clearly involved miscommunication. When there's miscommunication, usually everyone's involved, like everyone has a role in it. Uh, I think there's just missed signals. I think there was an assumption of proximity to the storm, and that was not the case. Uh, and it was, it could have been handled better all around, honestly. And when I, you know, on Friday again, I got a report, it went, it was emotional, it was tense, but again, I've gotten that report in plenty of other situations. Uh, Saturday goes by, Sunday goes by, no one's calling and saying there's any new information, not hearing from anybody with any additional specifics. It's not till Monday morning that I'm starting to hear in the public domain 
things I'm not hearing from anyone directly. Uh, and that's when it was time to cut through it and have a straightforward conversation. Everyone say, what's happening here? But again, after the air was cleared, it became pretty straightforward again. We were going to make a transition, but it was not going to happen overnight. It was going to take time. Uh, and we can do that the right way. Can you just clarify, though, then, why, why was Esposito not considered for this transition? Why would he long term not be the person you want? I'm sorry, say again? Why is Esposito not the person then long term for this position? Because, look, you, sometimes you can work with someone, in my case, I worked very closely with them over four and a half years, and feel there were some really good uh, skills, really good attributes, but there was also things missing that we needed for where we wanted to go. Uh, in the last four and a half years, the world has not gotten any easier. It's gotten harder. It's gotten more complex. There's more I want that agency to do on a strategic level. And you choose the right person for what the mission is. So for where we want to go going forward, I was certain that we needed to go in a new direction. Uh, you can respect someone's skills and abilities, but also have the feeling that someone else is a better choice for the job going forward. That's what I felt. Yeah. So on Friday, I know you said a lot of us made assumptions that would happen, but a lot of this was pretty well reported in your office <coughs> about it, this Sunday meeting, about what we were going to report. Um, did you send Laura Anglin in to fire Commissioner Esposito? And is that your, I mean, and is it true that you received a call from Esposito that you did not call from? No, her? never got a call from Esposito. Um, the, and let me just say it very clearly, never got a call that I have any record of, never saw anything on my phone. He's never mentioned trying to call me. Uh, maybe somehow there was a miscommunication within that, but I have no sense, no knowledge that he tried to call me. Again, we had a very good, we had two different conversations in person yesterday. Um, in terms of this decision, as I said, this was made weeks earlier at my direction. And I know, you know, around here people like to put things in black and white terms. I want to be clear. We decided we needed new leadership. Now, a lot of times we've talked to people and said, this role is not what we want going forward. And there have been times when people have said, hey, would you consider me for another role? Or sometimes we've already had in mind another role. I think that would have been a natural conversation on Friday if everything hadn't gone crosswise. Uh, when Joe and I sat down in the cool light of day, it immediately lended itself to that conversation. Were there other things that we could think about here? As we talked it through, it was clear the answer was yes, and that conversation is now proceeding. I think that might have been what happened on Friday if things had just been a little clearer. And there's been a, you know, many, many hundreds of uh, personnel conversations in the course of the last five years. Uh, this is really aberrant to me. I think this was a little bit like just somehow people really missed each other in a way I haven't seen previously. Do you, I mean, you were out of town, you were in another state for that. I mean, is it common for the mayor of New York City to, while he's away, send someone else to fire a commissioner? Uh, the way it works, the deputy mayors are the people that commissioners report to. And there's been plenty of situations where, on any number of personnel actions, deputy mayors have been the ones to carry it out. There are times when I do that myself for a variety of reasons. Look, in retrospect, I do want to say, and I want to take this on myself, look, everything in the end is my responsibility. I made the decision, and I believe the way it was being carried out would be the right way. Obviously, something went wrong. I have to take responsibility for that. In retrospect, understanding and appreciating how long Joe has served this city, I think I should have said, wait a minute, even though there's perfectly appropriate for a deputy mayor to have the conversation, it would have been better for me to have it up front. Uh, I've had that conversation with uh, people over the years. It's not something I have a problem doing, but I think that it would have been smarter to do it that way. Did you apologize to him? I had a good conversation with him. Just, it, it sounds like you met with Mr. Esposito twice yesterday. Correct. So something that I had heard as well, and that after the first meeting at Gracie Mansion, his future <laughs> sort of, to him at least, still remained kind of murky as to what was happening. I guess if this was in the works for weeks and you know you knew that Deputy Mayor Anglin was going to have this conversation with him on Friday, why did it take two meetings with Mr. Esposito to clear up? Look, I, I want to clarify, this is a very large operation. Decision was made. The Deputy Mayor was tasked with having the conversation, which is consistent with her uh, purview. I was not focused on the TikTok of exactly how and when she was going to have it, et cetera. Um, under normal circumstances, that conversation proceeds in a very straightforward manner. Uh, people are professionals. People are mature adults. You lay out, here's where we're at. Everyone understands. Everyone figures out the next steps. Something went wrong in that conversation. That's the bottom line. 
I'm not going to get into all the back and forth of the different conversations. This was an emotional situation when people are emotional. Sometimes people have to catch the breath, have to have a chance to think. We had a good first conversation. We had a productive second conversation. We all agreed where we were going. So it's as straightforward as that in the final analysis. Okay, Gloria. Um, Mr. Mayor, can you elaborate on what are the, some of the things that uh, Commissioner Esposito was not going to be a good fit for? You said there were some things that were great, other things that weren't. Look, as I said, I think he is, there's a lot of skill and a lot of experience he brings, and I thought he was particularly strong on the tactical side. But uh, this is an agency that I think is going to have to do more and different things going forward. I think it's going to have to take a more strategic approach. I think it's going to have to deal with a lot of subject matter it hasn't had to deal with so much in the past because of the changing nature of the threats we face. And I just felt it was time for new leadership after a variety of experiences that I've had. So that's the bottom line. I'm not, again, I'm not going to get into the intricacies because I want to respect that it's a personnel process. But what will be clear is as we select a new leader, uh, we're going to delineate why we chose that person and where we expect that person to take the agency. I think the bottom line there is, uh, you know, as we went into a second term, uh, laying out an approach to a second term, uh, giving each agency head uh, a chance to perform, seeing how that went, and coming to the conclusion that it was time to make a change. Go ahead. Mr. Yeah. Mayor, I have two questions, actually. First of all, um, why didn't you fire him yourself? I just said, I think in this situation, uh, the normal thing from my point of view, because someone reports to everyone, all the commissioners report to deputy mayors, that is normal and standard operating procedure. In retrospect, I want to take on myself, given who Joe is, what he's achieved, I think it would have been right for me to do it. So also, a second question I have is this. I know you said that you thought it was time for a new, new leadership mm -hmm. and that um, you wanted to go in a different direction. Could you be more specific, like what did he do wrong that you wanted to replace him? What, what were right. what, what so his deficiencies? It's, again, I, you know, again, personnel matter. I'm not going to go a lot into that. I'm going to be very clear with you. I'm a little confused why it's not about you personally or this specific question, but the broader tone I've heard over the last 24 hours. Sometimes you could think someone is a good person who's done a lot of good work and has strengths, but you still are looking for something else. Uh, it's just human life. I think if you just stand back and think about that sentence, you probably can think of any number of situations where you say, well, someone's good, but you need something else for what the mission is going forward. So basically, are you saying that he doesn't have, isn't interested in being data-driven? No, I'm not saying being, that. I'm saying we need something. I mean, something what are the new things? That, I mean, I'm, I'm confused about what you think the new skills you're looking for in the next person. Again. I'm only here to tell you that after careful consideration and almost five years of working with him and that agency closely, because you know in those situations where I particularly had to work closely with them, those were pretty intense experiences, I came to a conclusion. Now, I have to make decisions about leadership all the time. We've had a lot of continuity in the administration, and I'm proud of that. But I have to make decisions all the time about what we need at any given moment it's a team. We have to keep building our team. We have to keep responding to new challenges. I came to the conclusion we had to go a new direction. It's as simple as that. Yes? What sort of job are you imagining for him in the administration when he transitions out of OEM? We've had a discussion. I'll keep it broad because, again, this is a personnel matter. I'm not going to go into specific titles, but we've had a discussion about different types of uh, things we need in the administration that might fit him. But that's all I'm going to say right say now. What broadly, what sort of no, I'm, obviously he has a broad set of skills. He's done different things. I don't go into personnel deliberations like that.